of the country. Good evening and welcome to Major Report. I am Kayode Adebayo. The federal government has said that investors seeking to invest in its latest financial instrument must disclose specific identification requirements to participate in the exercise. This was disclosed in a document provided by the Debt Management Office. According to the government, all Nigerian citizens, including those residing abroad, must possess a bank verification number and a national identification number to subscribe to the domestic dollar bond. The board say the bond, which is part of a broader $2 billion program, is issued domestically as the government seeks $500 million from local and foreign investors in the first tranche. It informs that eligible participants include Nigerians residents in Nigeria, those in the diaspora with foreign exchange savings abroad, and foreign institutional investors. Speaking on the development, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of Economy, Mr. Wale Edo, said that the $500 million Domestic dollar bond will uh, enhance external reserves and help stabilize the foreign exchange situation in the country. The federal government has approved an upward review of the fees for the Nigerian passport effective from September this year. This was disclosed in a st statement issued by the spokesman for Nigeria Immigration Service, Kenneth Udo, on the, on the ex ando of the NIS. According to him, the increment aims to ensure the quality and integrity of Nigerian standard passports, seeing the 32-page passport booklet with five-year validity previously charged at 35,000 Naira will now be 50,000 Naira. He added that a 64-page passport booklet with 10-year validity, which was 70,000 Naira, will now be 100,000 Naira. He assured Nigerians of unwavering commitment to transparency and quality service delivery at all times. The First Lady of Nigeria, Senator Lure Mitinobu, has unveiled a recapitalization grant for 37,000 women petty traders across the 36 states and the Federal Capital Territory. At the flag of ceremony in Abuja, the First Lady said 1,000 women across each state and the FCT will get 50,000 Naira, totally 1.85 billion Naira, as part of our Renewed Hope Initiatives Economic Empowerment Program. The First Lady, who was represented by the FCT Mandate Secretary for Women Affairs, Mrs. Adi Dayo Benjamin Lani, said the event was held simultaneously across the 36 states, adding that government is aware of challenges faced by small and medium enterprises in the country. She added that the grants are given to women to help overcome the challenges while also creating jobs and growing their businesses. She maintained that economic empowerment for women remained the core objective of the Renewed Hope Initiative, noting that her pet project has continued to support the, re the reforms under the President Bola Tinobu administration. In related development, the wife of Ocean State Governor, Mrs. Titi Lola Adilike, has assured petty traders in the state of determination of government to lessen their burden and boost their businesses amidst daunting economic challenges. Mrs. Adeleke gave the assurance on behalf of the wife of the president, Mrs. Olure Mitinobu, at the Renew Hope Initiative and Economic Empowerment Program as she empowers 1,000 women with grants to boost their businesses. Oluchi Amoda completes the story. Team. The Minister of Budget and Economy Planning, Senator Abaka Bagudo, has said the recent nationwide and bad governance protest forced the federal government to listen to Nigerians' yearnings. The minister spoke at the Nigeria Economic Summit Group National Economic Dialogue on Nigeria's Economic Future, 25 Years of Democracy and Beyond. Senator Bagudo, who blamed the country's current struggles on past administrations, said Despite past mistakes, President Bola Tinobu has refused to play the blame game. While noting that efforts were in progress to improve the country's fortunes, he said government has taken the message on the need to do more and better. He said President Bola Tinobu has been very reluctant to reflect on the past and blame no anybody, adding that the net effect is 
that despite efforts by previous administrations, especially in the last 25 years, the country is not where it should be. The outgoing Chief Justice of Nigeria, Honorable Justice Ulukayo Diariwola, has disclosed that he signed off on the new Supreme Court rules 2024 earlier this month in order to switch the times and address current challenges. Justice Ariwola stated this while delivering his validatory speech at the Supreme Court complex in Abuja, having clocked the retirement age of 70. He explained that upon assuming office as the CGN, he was concerned about the rules regulating procedures in the APS court, which had been in place for 39 years, predating the advent of the internet and electronic transactions. He noted that although practice directions have been issued periodically over the years to meet the demands of justice, the substantive rules were still from 1985. The outgoing CJN expressed the belief that the rules of procedure of any court are crucial for its operation and must be dynamic and contemporary to meet the evolving demands of both the bar and the bench. The staff of Ocean State Broadcasting Corporation have been admonished to rededicate themselves to their various job responsibilities in ensuring that the corporation remains the model of broadcasting in the country. The Director General, Permanent Secretary OSBC, Mrs. Jola De Barola, gave the admonition at the retirement service organized for the director for the outgoing director of programs OSBC TV, Mr. Lasso Kanyo Ibayo, who bowed out of service. Aisha Badmos has the details. The Oshun State Broadcasting Corporation, OSBC, bid farewell to its director of TV programs, Mr. Olasukomi Oyebayo, in a retirement service program held at the OSBC premises. The ceremony held at the program department, attended by the general manager of TV programs, Mrs. Adiola Adebayo, director and staff of the department, who spoke eloquently about the virtues exhibited by the retiring director during his service year. The program later dovetailed to the Thanksgiving service at OSBC Christian Chapel. Speaking at the Thanksgiving service, the Director General Permanent Secretary of the Corporation, Mrs. Jolade Igbarola, described Mr. Oyebayo as an outstanding worker who demonstrates absolute commitment to his job responsibility throughout his service year, stressing that he will be greatly missed as one of the dedicated staff of the corporation. Mrs. Igbarola, therefore, all the management and staff of the corporation to borrow a leaf from the virtues demonstrated by Mr. Oyebayo. Earlier in his sermon, the general manager radio news, Mr. Babatunde Ogundomi, while appreciating God for the life of the retiree, admonished Mr. Oyebayo to take the time as an opportunity to further develop itself in productive ventures. Reflecting on the occasion, Mr. Oyebayo appreciated the support and cooperation of the management and staff of the corporation, who made the job easy during his service year. Mr. Oyebayo, who lauded Governor Ademola Adeleke for procuring world-class digital equipment, as well as enabling environment for the corporation, call on Governor Adeleke not to rest on his horse by continuing to render support that will transform the corporation. He granted me the grace to reach where I reached. It's not because one is wise, it's not because of anything, but because God loves just love us. Uh, because of the training we received, we were able to do the little we did. And because of the support we received from our colleagues, we were able to do the little we did. I thank the governor of the day, Senator Dr. Ashuaju Temola Deleke. He did something that nobody ever did for this place by providing six solid transmitters and six solid studios for OSBC Radio. I request of him and all people working with him to please, please and please work and provide equipment for OSBC television. Also on ground in the retirement program is the former director of radio program, Mrs. Abose de Bangboi Adeniji, friends and well wishers, as well as management and staff. <laughs> Aisha Badmos reporting for OSBC News. Now back to the story of Oshun First Lady. The wife of Oshun State Governor Mrs. Titi Lola Adeleke has assured petty traders in the state of the determination of government to lessen their burden and boost their businesses amidst daunting economic challenges. 
Mrs. Adeleke gave the assurance on behalf of the wife of the president, Mrs. Olure Mitinobu, and the Renew Hope Initiative Economic Empowerment Program as she empowers 1,000 women with grants to boost their businesses. Our reporter, Oluchi Amuda, completes the story. The Renewed Hope Initiative Economic Empowerment Program Recapitalization Grant for 1,000 women petty traders in each of the 30 states of the Federation and the FCT held in Ocean State brought together women from all the senatorial districts who converged on the Local Government Service Commission, State Secretary, to benefit from the grant. In her keynote address, wife of the Governor of Ocean State, Mrs. Titilala Adeleke, who stood in for the wife of the president, Mrs. Olure Mitinobu, said economic empowerment remains one of the most important factors in reducing poverty. She saluted the courage of the petty traders and their immense contributions and incredible resilience in overcoming the endless challenges of ensuring a better life for their families. She maintained that the motive behind the distribution of 50,000 Naira grant each to 1,000 women petty traders in Osho State is to empower them to boost their businesses. The grants provide provided today is to assist our women petty trader in overcoming some of their business challenge extend their business businesses create more jobs and contribute more robustly to our economy in their various goodwill messages the special advisor to the Governor of Market Affairs, Mrs. Grace Eniola Omotosho, who was represented by the Director of Commerce and Investment Promotion, Mrs. Bola Obiremi, the wife of the Head of Service, Dr. Mojiaino, the Yaloja General of Ocean State, Mrs. Mary Oyebodi, among others, described the initiative as a laudable one, just as they admonished the beneficiaries to effectively utilize the money for the purpose it was meant for. They also expressed appreciation to Mrs. Titilola Adeleke for being at the forefront of women's empowerment and for always having the Interest of women are at heart. Some of the beneficiaries who spoke in separate interviews with OSBC News are full of gratitude to the organizers of the event for reaching out to them. They maintained that the money would go a long way in boosting their businesses and sustaining their families in these trying times. The event climaxed with the presentation of 50,000 Naira each to the 1,000 beneficiaries drawn from all the senatorial districts in National State, courtesy of the Renewed Hope Initiative of the Office of the Wife of the President of Nigeria. Oluchi. Amda, OSBC News. The prolonged petrol scarcity has worsened in Lagos and Ogun. In Lagos, Ogun, and other states, as independent marketers have started lifting the product from private depots at 780 naira per liter from 595 naira per liter, indicating an increase of 31%. The marketers believe the hike in price reflects the current demand and supply of the product in the domestic market. Public Relations Officer of IPMA, Chief Chinedu Kadiki, who confirmed this in an interview with Newsmen, also expressed optimism that the bad situation will improve in the coming days. Chief Ukadiki noted that more trucks have left the depot in the past few days, adding that though independent marketers are still sourcing the product at a higher rate. According to him, the NMPC has started releasing products to independent marketers, noting that the queues being experienced now are ghost queues which appear in the morning and disappear in the afternoon or evening. Petrol distribution challenges, which have gone on for about six weeks, have led to long queues at filling stations across the country with several marketers jacking up their pump prices. The President of the Trade Union Congress, Festus Kusifu, has said that there is an attempt by the federal government to muzzle the Nigerian Labour Congress. Kusifu, who is also the President of Petroleum and Natural Gas Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, stated this while answering questions on the invitation of Nigerian Labour Congress President Joe Ajayro by the police over allegations bordering on terrorism financing and others. The invitation has raised some dust the union threatening to shut down the country if its leader is arrested. Kusifu said the government should open up more on the allegations levied against Ajayro 
adding that the way it is being perceived is that government is mostly the labor movement. He maintained that the NLC president is not representing himself, but the Labor Congress, noting that the organized labor will continue to advocate and force the government to do what is right in order to move forward. Following cases of fake certification recently detected by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board, JAM, examination boards in Kenya and Uganda have written the federal government to verify records presented by Nigerian candidates seeking admission into tertiary institutions in their respective countries. JAM made this known in a document titled Registrar's Report on 2023 Admission and 2024 UTME Policy Meeting made available to newsmen. According to the document, JAM stressed the need to protect Nigeria's tertiary institutions from international disrepute, stating that it will not falsify the records of any students. Recall that the federal government recently suspended the verification of degree certificates from Uganda, Kenya, Benin Republic, Togo, and some other countries over allegations of certificate racketeering. The government's decision came on the heels of an investigation by a reporter and on how he obtained a degree within six weeks in Benin Republic. Jam's public communications advisor of Fabian Benjamin said the initiative is one of the recommendations made by a committee set up by the federal government to combat fake degree racketeering in the country. You are welcome to Sports Segment. Nigeria's under-20 Falconet will take on Australia in Bogota for their first of two friendly matches organized by the Nigerian Football Federation to ensure team readiness for the FIFA under-20 Women's World Cup taking place in that country. Oluwabu Kumiyajibade has the detail of the story and more from the sports desk. A report. Report. The under-20 Falconet has fully recovered from their long trip to Colombia and set to confront the Aces. Coach Chris Danjuma and his crew have been taking the Falconet on drills since the beginning of this week in preparation for the clash with the Aussies tomorrow for the World Cup Finals generally. The clash with the girls has been scheduled for 4 p.m. Nigerian time tomorrow at the club Banco de la Republica in Bogota. The Super Eagles are expected to resume camping in Uyo next month ahead of their 2025 AFCON qualifiers against Bini and Rwanda. The three-time African champions will welcome the cheaters of Benin Republic starting at 5 p.m. at Godsui Akpabio International Stadium in Uyo and fly out to another 2026 World Cup qualifying rivals in Rwanda. Three days later for a second AFCON qualifier, they are currently without a coach with the Nigerian Football Federation stalling the appointment of a new handler following Fini the judge's exit from the Sadu in June. The body is currently torn between former Sweden coach Jane Anderson and Eve Reynard with a vast experience in African football, having coached the national teams of Zambia, Angola, Ivory Coast and Morocco. French giant Paris Saint-Germain are reportedly pulled out of the race to sign Napoli striker Victor Osime, focusing on retaining their current attacking options. The Ligue 1 champions had been linked with a move for the Nigerian international, particularly after the injury to Goncalo Ramos, which will sideline the Portuguese striker for up to three months. According to reports, PSG are leaning towards standing part and relying on their existing forward line, which include Usmin Dembele, Randa Kolomwani, Marco Asensio, and Bandali Bakola. Meanwhile, the French giant tabled a low offer for Osime in recent weeks, while their initial contact with Atlanta for Ademola Lukman also fell short of the Italian club's valuation. The latest development confirmed PSG's decision to step back from pursuing a pavilion signing and focus instead on utilizing their score depth as they chase League One and European success this season. However, his future remains uncertain as the transfer window approaches its conclusion. Oluwa Bukumi, Ajibade reporting for OSBC News. Coming from the foreign scene, Uganda Minister of Energy and Mineral Development, Ru Nankabiwa, says government is exploring oil in two new regions of the country. Oluwashi Ifumiade Labu has the detail of the story and more from the foreign scene.
Nancy, her report. Ugandan Energy Minister Ruth Nankabiwa. Preliminary exploration studies is being conducted in the Moroto Kadam Basin to assess its hydrocarbon potential. According to Nankabiwa, early results suggest the potential for commercial oil and gas in the Moto Kadam Basin. She said surveys have also started in the Kyogo Basin with plans to initiate studies in the Oima Basin, which is in western Uganda. Speaking in Kampala, the mid year media briefing on the development in Uganda's oil and gas sector. The Energy Ministry listed the objectives of the exploration efforts, which includes increase in Uganda's petroleum reserves, extended production beyond 25 years, and enhance the viability of midstream projects such as the East African Crude Oil Pipeline. Chad's National Election Management has announced that legislative, provincial, and municipal elections will be held on December this year. The announcement made by the president of the electoral body, Ahmed Batichiret, outlines that candidates can submit their nominations with final election results expected on February next year. The election schedule comes just days after the promulgation of the organic law defining the composition of the new parliament. While the ruling MPS party led by Secretary General Mohamed Zembada expressed readiness for the elections, the opposition ideal party criticized the timing, calling it a rush forward that undermines peace efforts in Chad. Townsons in Indonesia have gathered to protest against their government's attempt to reverse a constitutional court ruling that would open up elections to their rivals from smaller parties. Demonstrators have gathered outside parliament in the capital, Jakarta, as well as other major cities such as Padang, Bondong, and Yogyakarta. Indonesia's top court had ruled that parties would not need a minimum 20% of representation in their regional assemblies in order to field a candidate. However, within 24 hours, parliament tabled an emergency motion to reverse these changes and has sparked widespread condemnation and fears of a constitutional crisis. The fast-track legislation, which will reverse part of the court's ruling, is to maintain the status quo, which favors parties in the ruling coalition of the outgoing president, Joko Jokowi Widodo, and successor, Prabowo Subianto. As a result, many local elections are expected to be uncontested affairs. It is believed that the Indonesian government is trying to find a way around the constitutional court's decision to uphold the current minimum age limit of 30 for candidates, which would bar Mr. Widodo's 29-year-old son, Kesang Pagereb, from running in a regional contest in Central Java. Oluwase Ifumi Adelabu reporting for SBC News. Now, uh, with that news from the foreign scene, we come to the end of media report tonight on OSBC TV. The bulletin was edited by Adibari Ijimakinde. I am Kayode Adibari. Thank you for watching. Good night. <laughs>